Chaksu Unmeta Meda Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Kristaya Vutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaurani Pacharine Irishesa Sunyavadi Astyatya Dev Satarine Nchakopa de Rubescha Vipa Sindhu Bae Vajja Dita Nam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Bhutananda Siddhvaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Hmm. So uh, I chose this uh, verse because I'm getting questions and uh, about people feeling envy towards others and people feeling other people are envious of them. So rather than deal with it on a personal level, I thought it might be nice we can turn it into a discussion. <laughs> so this is the purpose of this particular verse. Purusho Ramacharitam Svavanar Upadaryayam. Can you straighten out the uh, the lettering? It's somehow not clear. You're not using you're using a uh, maybe I'll ask Satya Bhama to screen share because I have found that whenever I try to screen share, somehow maybe my internet connection is poor, that the letters are blurry. Satya Bhama, would you please screen share? Lavanya? Yeah. Yes, Mataji, I can do that. Hare Krishna. Okay. Uh, you can stop the sharing, I'll just share it. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. Okay, good. Purusho Ramacharitam Savana Upadaya Rayam Anri Samsya Paro Rajan Karma Bandhaya Vimukchate. Translation O King Pariksit, anyone who orally receives the narrations concerning the characteristics of Lord Ramachandra's pastimes will ultimately be freed from the disease of envy and thus be liberated from the bondage of fruitive activities. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Here in the material world, everyone is envious of someone else. Even in religious life, it is sometimes found that if one devotee has advanced in spiritual activities, other devotees are envious of him. Such envious devotees are not completely free from the bondage of birth and death. As long as one is not complete, completely free from the cause of birth and death, one cannot enter the Sanatana Dharma or the eternal pastimes of the Lord. One becomes envious because of being influenced by the designations of the body. But the liberated devotee has nothing to do with the body and therefore he is completely on the transcendental path. A devotee is never envious of anyone, even his enemy. <clears throat> because the devotee knows that the Supreme Lord is his Supreme Proprietor, he thinks, what harm can the so-called enemy do? Thus, the devotee is confident about, about his protection. The Lord says, mam upadyante tam bhajami aham. According to the proportion of one's surrender unto me, I respond accordingly. A devotee must therefore be, be completely free from envy, especially of other devotees. The, envious, the envy of other devotees is a great offense of Vaishnava Parad. A devotee who constantly engages in hearing and chanting is certainly free from the disease of envy, and thus he is eligible to go back home, back to Godhead. 
Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hmm. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, in one of his writings, he explains the, the six enemies of the conditioned soul. And that is Kama, Kroda, Mohan, Lobia, Mada, Matsarya. Mm -hmm. Kama, lust, Kroda, anger, Loba, greed, Mohan, delusion, Mada, pride, Matsarya, envy. Hmm. He says that in anger, lust is present. In greed, lust and anger is present. In illusion, lust, anger, and greed is present. In pride, lust, anger, greed, and illusion is present. And in envy, all six enemies are present. So envy, envy is considered to be the reason why the conditioned soul becomes conditioned. Mm -hmm. In other words, we fall to the material world because of being envious of Krishna. We keep that material contamination in relationships with other living entities. And therefore people find others to be competitors in different ways, either subtle or gross. And this envy causes one to see things in a crooked way. Uh, here it's mentioned that uh, a devotee is never envious because he knows, um, is confident about the protection of the Lord. One becomes envious by being influenced by the designations of the body. And here is the cause of envy. One becomes attached to or influenced by material uh, considerations. In other words, Prabhupada used to say, animal killing is an indication of envy. God has given that animal its right to live accordingly. And therefore, I interfere with that. I kill that animal, shows that I am envious of that animal. I don't like its existence for whatever reason, and therefore one kills. Mm -hmm. This envy is the root cause of all the diseases in the world. It's the foundation for wars. One nation is better than another nation. And sometimes the smaller nation, nation is envious of others. The other nations because they're better or the bigger nations want to continue to be in control therefore they try to push out any competitions on any level this is another form of envy so we find in the material world especially if one has the same occupation same uh, activity one feels slighted if they are in a lesser position. And one sometimes causes others harm based on that. In other words, envy is a disease of the mind that causes one to feel unhappy or threatened by another's advancement another's position, another's possessions, like that. So that's how it manifests. So here Prabhupada says that 
one should not even be envious towards one's enemies. Now that might be a little hard. We think, well, you know, for someone who is my friend, it's nice. And if someone is my en uh, enemy, or someone is envious of me, or for some reason, I find ways to become envious of them, I make them a competitor or even an enemy. And therefore, I don't like what they have. I want it, and they shouldn't have it. It has become so commonplace that people don't even see it as something that is unusual, what it is. Uh, Hare Krishna. So one should uh, take inventory. And the way to, uh, of course, we have two different principles. There's people who are envious of us and people that we also may feel some envy towards others. Um, there's not much you can do when people are envious of you other than avoid that association or that, uh, in, in that contact. That's the best way because just to continue on with that relationship will only become make it worse. So better to break it off at whatever level it's being practiced. And that way, the envy no longer becomes a factor of interaction or interchange. So a devotee doesn't become envious, he becomes happy. It's like it's mentioned that if one has more of something, Mm. Uh, why does that person, sometimes we find fault with the person and we think, oh, what is it about that person that they get so much good fortune? Mm -hmm. I can see that they don't have any good qualities. I can see that they are not worthy of what they have. So that's another way of looking at envy. The other way around is people see us in a, kind of, in a competitive way. And uh, sometimes they want us to play that game of competition. But that shouldn't disturb us. Well, you can't really stop another person's envy, but you can stop being envious of others. How do we become free from that envy? When we learn to become self-satisfied. In other words, when we become satisfied with whatever Krishna arrangements have been made for us. Sometimes we find in our life that we're striving for another situation and somebody else has it already. And for whatever reason, it can't, it can't be given to us.
Hare Krishna. Dear devotees, hmm. maybe uh, Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Hare Bo, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So uh, one has to be very uh, satisfied. That's one of the characteristics or one of the austerities of the mind to be satisfied. It's not so easy to be satisfied because the world around them, us is never satisfied. And we're taught not to be satisfied. But when we know that Krishna is in control and Krishna is giving us and everyone else what they deserve accordingly, one can see that whatever I have or don't have, it's by the arrangement of Krishna in the same way we can see that same thing in others. And therefore the devotee becomes peaceful. And therefore, if he gets something, he feels happy. If he loses something, he doesn't feel unhappy. Satisfied. So this envy is, uh, must be destroyed with service, humble service to the Vaishnavas, which is the antidote for relieving one of this disease. It's in, his, in this translation, it says the disease of envy. It's the disease of the soul covering the mind. It fills the mind with wrong, the wrong attitude, which forces one to think and act in the wrong way. And then as soon as we think in the wrong way, we get a taste for that activity. And by, by, by performing the activity, we're implicated in sinful reactions. So this is the uh, disease of the age. Here, um, let's go to another verse, fourth canto, 19th chapter, verse number two. Not fourth, fourth canto, yeah, 19th chapter. Verse two, yeah. Tad avek prekya bhagavan, tad karma ti sayam atmanam, satakratur na mamrse, priktur yagya mahotsavam. Translation. When the most powerful Indra, the king of heaven, saw, saw this, he considered the fact that King Prithu was going to exceed him in fruit of activities. Thus, Indra could not tolerate the great sacrificial ceremonies performed by King Prithu. Purport, in the material world, everyone who comes to enjoy himself or lord it over material envy, nature is envious of others. This envious is also found in the personality of the king of Hendra, Indra. As evident from revealed scripture, Indra was several times envious of many persons. He was especially envious of great fruit of activities and execution of yoga practice or cities. Indeed, he could not tolerate and he desired to break them up. He was envious due to fear that those who tolerate another's advance, those who perform great sacrifices for the execution of mystic yoga might occupy his seat. Since no one in the material world can tolerate another's advancement, everyone in the material world is called Matsarya, envious. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is therefore said that Srimad Bhagavatam is meant for those who are near Matsaranam, non-envious. In other words, one who is not free from the contamination of envy cannot advance in Krishna consciousness, and Krishna consciousness. However, if someone excels another person, the devotee who is excelled thinks how fortunate the other person is to be advancing in devotional service. Such non-envy envy is typical of Vaikuntha. However, when one is envious of his competitor, that is material, the demigods posted in the material world are not exempt from envy. Mm -hmm. 
So again, we're here. Now we're seeing how even this envy carries up to the levels of the demigods <laughs> who are actually great devotees, but they sometimes are afflicted by this envy because they have big powerful posts. <laughs> And sometimes they're afraid if someone performs great tapasya, uh, then they will they'll lose their position. Um, it's understood that by austerity, one can position oneself anywhere in the material world through a recommended type of austerity. So at times people want higher positions and power and sometimes they focus on getting that. And through that, those who are in that position already feel threatened. Here we saw how Indra, seeing that the horse sacrifice was being performed by King Prithu, was thinking now Prithu is going to excel him and therefore he felt envy. Therefore he stole the horse he brought the horse, his son captured Inva, uh, Ajita. Ajita is the son of Maharaj Prithu. He captured Indra, brought, him, brought both Indra and the horse back. Indra again left, and again he stole the horse for the second time. Again, Ajita brought him back. And this time Brahma stepped in and told Prithu, don't perform another sacrifice because you're just going to create trouble, be satisfied with what you have. Whether it's 99 or 100, it doesn't matter. What matters is one's character. And so um, therefore showing compassion to Indra, although he's, Indra is acting wrong, he, the King Prithu actually exemplified what is the quality of an advanced devotee. He's not in competition with others. And if he sees that one is in competition with them, he welcomes them. And he also uh, is happy to see that person excel. And Prabhupada also explains that even in the Vaikuntha realm, there is a type of enviousness, which is not of the same nature as the material envy. What is that envy? Is that people see Krishna, or you might say the gopis will see Krishna being served by another gopi in a most wonderful way. And everyone uh, notices how Krishna is pleased by that gopi. And they congratulate that gopi. At the same time, they think, well, I'm going to also serve Krishna in such a nice way. So this is spiritual envy, which is not competitive in the sense that it's mean spirit. It's competitive only to give Krishna pleasure. And giving Krishna pleasure is the reasons for the competition and not simply to put oneself in a better position. So that is welcomed and it's talked about here as a feature of advancement in spiritual life. When one wants to serve Krishna in a, in a better and more way, just to please Krishna. So it may take a look like the form of competition, but it's actually simply the um, acceleration of one's bhakti towards Krishna. But the demigods, as Prabhupada ends the purport here, says those in the material world who are posted here are not exempt from this envy. So in one writing, Srila Prabhupada says, the difference between material and spiritual is Material means envy, spiritual means non-envious. He said, if you're not envious, you're in the spiritual world. If you're envious, you're in the material world. That's how clear cut he made these statements to show what, how bad this quality is. It leads to repetition of birth and death. And that's what Prabhupada said in the previous purport that those who are envious, they simply are afflicted or affected by this uh, desire uh, to overcome someone in a competitive way and feeling happy if they can overshadow. Sometimes we even feel happy when someone bad happens, something bad happens to someone who we consider a competitor. 
for the devotee, as Prabhupada said, is not even uh, envious of those who are envious of him or her. They're the well-wishers of all living entities. Uh, they don't try to uh, exasperate the situation by trying to prove themselves better. They simply go on with their devotional service and tolerate what, what other people may feel towards them. That's mentioned in this particular purport. Okay, so these are some points to think about. It's a major topic. I think we've discussed this in many sessions of questions and answers, but it's not, uh, I see that people still are confused how to deal with this envy, either when it's coming from them towards others or when it's coming from others towards them. In any case, uh, don't identify with it. That's the beginning of getting rid of it. As soon as you identify with it, you set a whole series of things in motion, which brings about a certain type of results. Okay, so if you have any questions or comments. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for explaining this very important point of envy that particular line that if we are envious, we cannot make advancement in Krishna consciousness is so important for us to keep in mind. I have another question for you, Guru Maharaj. Would you like us all to put our video cameras on? Would that help in the lecture? Um, mm, not today. <laughs> okay. Dear yeah. devotees, please go ahead and maybe ask. A, not, maybe a, those who ask questions should turn on their video when they ask the question. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Dear devotees, please put on your video camera as you begin to ask your questions so that Guru Maharaj can see you and we can also see you. And it would be very nice to see our God family, of course. And please feel free to... Uh, ask any clarifying questions also. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. My humble obeisances Hare to well. you. All glory oh. to Srila Prabhupada. This is Ashutosh. Hare well. Nice to see you. Uh, like you. Maharaj. Maharaj, I just wanted to know what is the fine line of difference between getting inspiration from someone and getting to the point of envy? Inspiration? Well, sometimes they say that envy is, a, is admir admiration turned upside down. <laughs> That's an interesting definition of envy. You admire, one, one admires someone in such a way that they feel unhappy because of what that person has. So they feel unhappy because they like what that person has, but they want it. So that is, that is a type of, uh, that is ad, that's ad, admiration. But one can also get inspiration from that. And this is what spiritual envy is, is that the gopis, when they see uh, another person serving Krishna in a better way, or Krishna seems to be very pleased by their service, that inspires them in their to serve Krishna in a better way also. So it looks like envy, but actually it's, uh, in a spiritual sense, it is actually uh, increasing one, a service to Krishna and Krishna is the benefactor from that and the devotees also. But in the material world, it simply comes out as competition or it could also come out as feeling unhappy about one's present situation, that is, that is envy turns inward, which we use another word for that. It's called jealousy. <clears throat> so, it, you know, sometimes they look the same. But what is the difference is the consciousness. The consciousness is different. So if one is a well-wisher of other, others, even if they feel, um, well, 
they may get some, they may admire someone because someone is in a better position for the, uh, than them. That's spiritual. That's fine. Or that's acceptable. In the material world, there, a sense of unhappiness comes when that type of, uh, when we see someone in a better position, especially for those who have the same activities and occupations. So um, sometimes it starts with admiration. It's interesting or inspiration, we get inspired, but then we realize, oh, well, where does that inspiration take us? It should take us to improve ourselves rather than trying to uh, tear another person down. Does that help a little bit? It, it looks the same in many cases but it's the consciousness that's different. The idea is to be satisfied within oneself and one can get inspiration from others, but that inspiration should not lead to being unhappy for another because of another person's knowledge, position, whatever they may possess. Or just when, when one person doesn't like someone for whatever reason, you know, there's so many reasons why people don't like each other. Some of them have no foundation in anything logical. They just don't like each other because, maybe because of cultural differences, national differences, economic differences. Mm, these don't really have any foundation because that's the way the material world is. Uh, that's why Prabhupada says there's no equality in the material world. You can't make this world equal because there's always people who are better and there's always people who are lesser. But on the spiritual platform, everyone is satisfied in themselves and Krishna is the object of everyone's service. So even though there's different gradations of service and, and different expressions of uh, how that service is executed, still everyone remains satisfied because they're full in themselves. But here people are lacking in themselves and they identify themselves with the body because they identify with themselves with the body. They identify themselves with something that is not them. And bodies are different. <laughs> so this envy is based on some false premise that I'm this body. And that other person is their body also. But real knowledge is, is to see the soul within the body and not identify the person with the body so much or the activities that is performed by the body. So in the material world, you can't, you can't get rid of envy. It's not possible because that's how this, this world works. It's, it's, a com it's a competitive arena and envy is the motivating energy that compete that people compete with for each other. And it takes the form of, and one nation may be envious of another nation and will try to tear that nation down. Just like the Americans are envious of the, of the Middle Eastern countries because they have all the oil. So they want that. <laughs> to run their machines, to keep their, you know, keep their electronic parts going. So there's an envious towards that. And so they always, they try to do some espionage or create some, some situation where they can get that oil. If they can't get it one legally, they do it through other illegal means. I want what you have, that's envy. And I, <laughs> But do you think, oh, well, let me see what Krishna's given me. Oh, Krishna's given me so many wonderful things. Why should I worry or be unhappy towards others because they have more? Let me be so, let me just serve Krishna with whatever I have. And then that way, Krishna expands that person's character and qualities. In other words, whatever qualities you have in whatever proportion you have those qualities they expand when they are engaged in Krishna's service and that's how Krishna reciprocates 
But in the material world, it's everything is competitive. Even in the family, people compete in the family. Sometimes even husbands and wife compete against each other. Brothers and sisters, and that, that competition is there everywhere in this world. Or whatever. Two kids fight, one kid has better toys than the other kid. <laughs> this is, it's everywhere. But as devotees, as which devotees are not envious because they know, uh, 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 Krishna has given everyone what they deserve. And therefore, I'm simply satisfied with whatever Krishna gives me. If he gives me more, that's nice. But we find, it's mentioned in both of these verses that we brought up today, that envy is even as found in religious and spiritual circles. One is making advancement in Krishna consciousness, and one becomes envious of the other. There's no reason for it. On the spiritual platform, we, we congratulate a person for their uh, advancement rather than trying to be unhappy because of that. Mm -hmm. Does that help a little bit? Um, yeah, I think your your volume is off now. Sorry, Guru Maharaj, I had turned off to mute because I'm outside. Yeah, I, I yes, I think I think the most important thing is the premise. On what basis is uh, that? Whether it's an inspiration that helps us decide what is the actual reason behind it, and then that can guide us whether it's an inspiration or whether it's Threaded itself into envy. Yeah, and there's a fine line there. <laughs> we do get inspired by others, but that shouldn't lead us to be unhappy because of others for whatever others have. You know? The unhappiness is the indication of the envy. Or that directing that unhappiness towards oneself. Um, trying to lament about one's lesser position that's a form of that's a form of jealousy oh I can't be as good as that or I'm no good or I'm just you know start to uh, demean one own, one's own self for being in a lesser position and making this false comparison <laughs> If you get away from comparing, which is hard in the material world because everyone is trying to compare, then you can get away from this, uh, this envy. If we want to compare ourselves, compare ourselves to Krishna, and then we can be humble because <laughs> we can never be Krishna. So. Absolutely. <laughs> But don't try to don't try to imitate Krishna. <laughs> That's not the idea either. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Are you in your backyard? I'm just outside, Maharaj. I uh, came out with kids to the park and myself to do some yoga. So I took the opportunity. Looks like you got a nice day there. <laughs> Uh, yes, we've got the uh, today and tomorrow is going to be sunny. So want to make the most of it, get some vitamin D. Good, good, good. Here we had beautiful, strong, sunshiny, nice weather until three hours ago. <laughs> now it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> so people are confused here. It's like one well, half of the day, it's so nice and beautiful. Everybody's out in short sleeves and shorts and walking around. And the next minute, it's raining and there's nobody around. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, we've got two days of no rain. Um, hopefully, good sunshine. So we want to make the most of it. Yeah, maybe we'll export some of our rain towards, <laughs> towards the north. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good to see you. Pleasure. Thank you, Arch. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna. Thank you, Ashutosh Prabhu. Dear devotees, if you have any further questions, please do go ahead and please do put on your camera so we can all see you. Thank you. Hare Krishna Mataji, uh, there is a question on chat um, by Dheeraj Prabhu, I think. Dheeraj Prabhu, would you like to uh, actually speak to Guru Maharaj or do you want me to read out your question? Uh, Guru Maharaj, I think... Uh, it's better if I read the question. I have heard that the jiva in the spiritual world has different expansions or the jiva partakes in different pastimes simultaneously. That is Vrindavan Leela, Dwarka Leela, Gauranga Mahaprabhu Leela. If this is the case, when the jiva falls to the material realm, does the jiva leave the spiritual world completely? Or are we an expansion simply experiencing the material world simultaneously? <laughs> well, deeply tough question. The actually understanding is we never, this material world is a dreamlike existence and we're dreaming. I am this body and everything that's connected with this body is part of the dream. So we actually never left Krishna, although we think we did. And we're, we're in this illusion, just like when you go to sleep at night, at night you, you lose your, your physical activities and the identity that comes along with that and you're in another state you're dreaming and you're sometimes taking on another form in the dream but, it's, but when you wake up you also you, you understand it's just some dream so the whole process is to wake up from this uh, uh, this illusion that we are this material body and that this material world is our is our home the material world is simply a covering over the spiritual world. It's like a cloud. Therefore, it's more like a shadow. In substance, it doesn't, in substance, it exists in its most basic form, but in, in reality, it doesn't exist at all. So, in the spiritual world, the soul is not limited. It can, it can perform different play. It can act in different places at the same time. That's the nature of spirit. It's uh, not relegated to a particular situation. Liberated means completely free. But within the realm of the spiritual, the service mentality is the essential principle. But a soul can be in different leelas at the same time, yeah. Generally, it doesn't do that because it finds itself the most satisfied in its own, own, in its own uh, position as an eternal servant according to that designation. But when it leaves the spiritual world, it comes into this dream world of material existence, that's all. That's why Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gola Chandra Bohole, Kota Nidra, Jayo Maya, Pisachira Kohole. Wake up, sleeping soul. Wake up. You are sleeping on the witch of Maya, the, in the lap of the witch of Maya. Wake up. Wake up to your true identity. 
Jivar Sarupai Krishna Nichidas. As you wake up from a dream, we have to wake up from this dreamlike existence of material energy. And we can, the waking process is the process of bhakti yoga. When bhakti yoga becomes uh, perfected, then one is fully awake. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hiraj Prabhu, is that all right? Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. This question of jealousy and envy is a very deep-rooted uh, anartha and right now I am dealing with a young middle-aged mother who is uh, having this issue. She is extremely jealous, envious of another member of her family who she feels is much better in uh, carrying out devotional service, in doing many different things. She herself is a housewife while this other lady is a working lady. So somehow she feels that woman is better off She's doing so much devotional service. I'm just at home. I'm busy cooking for everybody. Nobody appreciates me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So how can this be addressed in such a way uh, to help her see that what she's doing as a housewife is also very important and is also devotional service? Yeah, because it's given to her by Krishna. So be satisfied with whatever Krishna gives you. And then when you when you accept what Krishna gives you, then you can make the use of it. If you're not accepting your situation, you don't see the benefits of it. You only see what you think is the uh, downside of it. For instance, a, a, a materialist who was after money may have millions of dollars, but still they want more. Mm -hmm. Being wanting more causes them to to uh, struggle hard unnecessarily if they're just happy with it. Just like Ravana, Ravana had so much, <laughs> but he still wasn't happy. He had very many beautiful queens. He had the best of all queens, Mandodari. He had followers. He had wealth. He had power. He had position, prestige, family, everything. But he wasn't happy because he was envious of another person's wife. Lust, envy. Be satisfied. Satisfaction means thanking the Lord for whatever we have. That's called being grateful. Now, don't worry about what everybody else has. <laughs> they have what they have because of Krishna. Krishna has given it to them. You don't like what Krishna gives to another person and you're unhappy by what Krishna gives to you. So what can you do? <laughs> but there, it's, the, it's a material desire that's deeply rooted. And that can only be, uh, you can't communicate so much to a person unless they make a little bit of spiritual advancement when they make a little spiritual advancement they can start to understand that yeah let me just be satisfied with what i have and then i can go from there and i can increase what other people have or don't have it's not it doesn't matter <laughs> it's just a mental disease Thank you, Guru Maharaj. There was one girl, the former wife of one very senior devotee. She was she had cancer. She was leaving the body, and she kept saying, "There's one thing I know: Krishna loves me. That's all. I know Krishna loves me." And she carried that mood all the way until she left the world. 
she would she could focus on that, that Krishna loves her and now she's leaving the body so she had full faith in, in Krishna's love to her and that's and that gave her complete peace of mind that's a beautiful example Guru Maharaj I will try to uh, I will try to use that example to to yeah, just soothe to, her and to comfort her yeah Krishna loves you just as much as he loves that other person. Take Krishna's perspective, not your own. That's beautiful. Krishna loves me. That's all I'm going to hang on to. That's really beautiful. Thank it you. It has a lot. Yeah, it's very powerful, actually. Right. Yeah. It is. Nice. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so we stop here. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, it doesn't look like there are any more questions. So mm -hmm. we thank you. Yeah, Mother Lavanya, are you still there? Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Jai Ho. Thank you so much for this topic, Guru Maharaj. Um, even though you um, you have given classes on this on several times, um, but this brain doesn't. Uh, um, uh, I keep on <laughs> all these things. <laughs> and Guru Maharaj, um, I I was thinking like, uh, so uh, if I can't uh, if I can't avoid this association, um, like people who are envious towards me, so then uh, then is it better to tolerate them, or what should I do? I'm still confused, Guru Maharaj. Um, you have to see the situation. <laughs> Sometimes you can say something like, uh, uh, what's wrong with you today? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get enough sleep? Did somebody steal your prashadam? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you have to make it, make it a little light to indicate that well, the way they're acting is not so good. <laughs> If you get angry and you, or else you become like them, then it's just it just gets worse. Yeah, that's what. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I understand that. That's why I was keep. Um, I'm I'm thinking of keeping silent, but uh, sometimes you keep silent and sometimes you don't. You have to see the situation. I mean, Sri Bhastakor, one. This one Shakta was envious of him and tried to defame him by making him look like a Shakta worshiper of Durga. He just tolerated it. And he even even went along with it. And then of course that person got a reaction for that and got sick because of that. And Lord Chaitanya punished that person. And Srivas was feeling bad that that person had to suffer. No, that's that's how a Vaishnav thing is. Huh? And and Prabhupada also said that as you make advancement in spiritual life, you will bring enemies to or to. This is the material world. It's not every everyone is not like you. Everyone is trying to enjoy this world. So when they see that you're actually enjoying, but you're not part of this world. They become unhappy. <laughs> but what can you do? That's the material world. So if you can't avoid that association, you just have to somehow or other. I would try to diffuse that by saying something. If you can do diffuse it, that's best because it's good for them. They're not real, they're not helping themselves if they say anything negative towards another person or feel negative. So we, we don't want that to happen. We don't want to think, well, 
they're making offenses and they're making offenses towards me and therefore they're going down also. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Even I think that um, and, um, people judge too much like uh, easily the other people's situation. They don't know their situation and they judge people. Um, that's why it starts everything the, that starts, um, I think, Guru Maharaj. It's, and, and it's just due to dissatisfaction within oneself. Mm. You're satisfied and you're happy. You're not envious. Then, in the material world, nobody's happy. <laughs> nobody's satisfied. Some people are envious overtly, and some people are envious covertly. But it's there. It's the way the world works. It's just the material world is full of envy. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah, I think just get advice sometimes when you find yourself in that situation, what to do and how to respond or not respond. Another way to diffuse it is just buy them a present. <laughs> <laughs> buy them a gift. <laughs> Say, I, I was thinking of you today, and here's a nice gift that I want to give you. Yeah, your volume, your volume's off now. Um, my kids are speaking something, so um, I just got distracted, so. Yeah, if you can do that, that's nice. You know, buy them a gift. Say, this is for you. I was thinking of you, and I wanted to give you something here. <laughs> That's a good idea, but uh, I'll try for uh, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it might work, and it does work in many cases. They, they you soften up their heart, and then they change. Yeah, that's true. I'll invite them. Uh, I'll win, invite those devotees to our house and eat nice lunch. Yeah, find out what they like and make it. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, and a more on a more organizational thing is tomorrow I'm supposed to give a class at the temple and my class finishes right around the beginning of this class. Mm -hmm. So usually there's some uh, lead way. I might be a little late tomorrow, but I'll be here. So you can, yeah, uh, yeah your voice is off again. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm listening. Um, because of my background and noises here, I just mute. Um, so, uh, Guru Maharaj, okay. uh, it will be the, uh, so we are going to combine this class with the temple class? No, uh, temple class is going on separately. And then our class is right after that. Okay, Guru Maharaj. I just, I might be a little late, that's all. And so expect me to be late. I'll try to make it on time, but I might be five or 10 minutes late. Yes, Guru Maharaj, sure. Definitely, I'll inform Brinda Mataji about that. Um, and I'll be there too. Um, okay, good. Thank you Looks so like much. you got nice sunshiny weather there, huh? Yes, Guru Maharaj, yeah. It's morning, 11 o'clock uh, here, so. I'm ready to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, it's not that late here. It's a little after six o'clock here in the evening. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for your association. Hare Krishna, Jai Ho. Srinivas, Hare Ho, Hare Ho, Hare Ho. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble It's your It's your duty to make your wife happy. <laughs> Hi, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> That's a husband's duty. He has to make sure his wife's always happy. <laughs> and the wife has to make sure the husband's always happy. <laughs> Sorry, um, it got cut.
husband, wife has to. Um, can you repeat your name? Husband has to make sure the wife is happy, and the wife has to make sure the husband's happy. Okay. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, we both are trying. <laughs> <laughs> It's easy if you just remember the day when you first met. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry for my jokes. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to hear from you. Always. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna, my obeisances. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for this wonderful class. I think more classes will be really good for us to really root out the envy in our hearts and become really devotional towards Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we can reach that stage, then we're in the spiritual world. Okay, thank you. We'll see you all. Tomorrow. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Bol Namrata. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Over that Lila. Welcome back.